presidential election. He did it via Twitter. Wow. Okay. That was a landmark. So that was number one on the list. Uh, what also made the list was a ferry boat pilot who actually witnessed uh, Sully Sullenberger land U.S. Airways jet on the Hudson River and That's successfully amazing. scuttled the jet in the water. Uh, what also made the list was uh, <laughs> Kanye West <laughs> apologizing almost a year after uh, that Taylor Swift incident in, in, you know, interrupting her on the stage. Somewhere saying, we went from being pure to a left turn. <laughs> yes, yes. He, he typed the following three words on his Twitter account. I'm sorry, Taylor. That, that made the list. <laughs> and um, not to be outdone was, uh, was Charlie Sheen. Oh, God. Who, uh, you know, I, I can't say that he said anything too interesting on Twitter, but <laughs> what they picked as the most interesting feature about this was he tweeted that he was able to get to, he said, thank you to Twitter for allowing me to get to 100 million followers so quickly. You know, Twitter, I don't know if it's going to go out of style or not, because uh, it's a powerful medium. And because it's a short format, it's very easy to adopt. People can follow each other, and it's worth a lot of money, folks. Uh, so I don't know that Twitter is going away, but I do think that it went from sort of a news a uh, related phenomena where people were tweeting out uh, news and information to also, you know, being embraced by the entertainment industry and being used for, you know, let's face it, other kinds of communication. But it's here to stay. I think like text messaging, you know, we early adopters didn't think that it was going to be such a big hit, and yet most of the world, even relationships these days happen with texting and over cell phones. So it's not entirely surprising to me that Twitter has already begun its top ten and that, well, at least I'm happy to see Barack Obama still a top tweet in their history, and it's not Kanye. I will be thankful for that. But on the subject of tweets and cell phones, I read a good article on thefastertimes.com about how love, longing, and cell phones are helping Indians, that is, uh, young Indians, find each other and have romances. Because in India, life can be very restrictive, especially if you're in your, in your teen years, in your young 20s. Dating is still taboo in many places. And so how do you ever communicate when you don't get a lot of privacy, when you're living at home with an extended family, when you rarely get privacy, how do you ever have those conversations, those, you know, sweet nothings in someone's ear? Well, you do it with your cell phone. This is great about how flirting by SMS has become commonplace in India now. And it is probably the way couples get to know each other before they get married. So once they get introduced, oftentimes with uh, the concept of, introductions and arranged marriages, the couples will actually find a way to have a relationship via cell phones, via these text messages. And it's like the one little sliver of privacy they ever get out of these relationships when the rest of the world, the rest of the families are watching them. And this is what I thought was funny. In many cases, people will feel very comfortable flirting with each other using text messaging, but they won't even speak to each other in the office because in the office it's taboo. You don't have that social culture in the work environment the way that we do here. Office romances are rare and, and very well hidden uh, features in the Indian office landscape versus here. And so the cell phone has become a convenient outlet for people to have those romances. I think it's sweet. Where there is a will, there's a way. And where there is love, people will find technology to get past the social obstacles. <laughs> That's a very funny story. It reminds me, we were on the show once before. We did a story about how certain villages in India were preventing young women from getting cell phones <laughs> because they were afraid of this happening. So it's kind of funny, but it's, it's telling of the times, you know? It is. And, you know, you're not going to stop it. But, uh, hey, you know, I, I just I found it ingenious. And on that happy note, folks, we hope that you have a wonderful weekend ahead, and we want to encourage you to write to us uh, so that we can read your letters here on the air and also figure out what it is that you want us to talk about. You know, we find stories every week that we think will be of interest to our viewers, but we would certainly love to hear from you. And if there are topics you want us to cover, please let us know by writing to us at darshan at darshantv.com. And we hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Namaste. Namaste.